there, folks. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you can make it, and I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Let me know in the comment section below what's been your favorite episode. In today's episode, we're going to be making a classic Italian salami called Ventricina, or Ventricina. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Ventricina. Either way, this is an absolutely amazing salami with coarsely ground pork, a little spicy, and to be honest, it's one of the most beautiful salami that I think I've ever seen. Salami making can be a little tricky. It does require a unique set of skills and a lot of patience because a bunch can go wrong when you start to ferment and dry cure meat. Now, there is one particular tool that a salami maker can own that actually minimizes the amount of problems that you can have when you start making fermented meats, and that tool is a pH meter, which which brings us to today's sponsor, Apera Instruments. Apera Instruments is the manufacturer of high quality electrochemical instruments and sensors that measure everything from pH salinity, total display solids, dissolved oxygen, you name it. The product that I use most from Apera Instruments is their pocket pH meter. This is an amazing tool when it comes to making salami because it is reliable, it's accurate, and it's kind of like your insurance policy to make sure that you don't get anyone sick. But if you're not into salami and you're into, let's say, making sourdough bread or fermenting things like kimchi, sauerkraut. Maybe you're into hydroponics or you have a swimming pool where the pH of your water is important. All you gotta do is stick in the probe and in a second or two, you will have an accurate reading. It is literally just that simple. The more you watch our videos, the more you see how I rely on this particular pH meter for accuracy and safety. I'm going to put a link to the Apera Instruments website in the description box below as well as this particular pocket pH meter so you can get some more information for yourself. And now for the product giveaway. Apera Instruments has agreed to give away one pocket pH meter, the PH60S-Z, the exact same model that I use in all of my fermenting and salami making videos. This is an incredible unit, guys. It's Bluetooth compatible, it connects to your smartphone, and it takes a lot of the guesswork when it comes to making salami and other projects that require pH testing. How do you enter to win this particular pH meter? Well, first thing you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Next, give this video a thumbs up. Finally, leave this video a comment and let me know what project you would use the Apera Instruments PH60S-Z in. Are you making salami? Are you making sourdough bread? Are you making sauerkraut? Let me know why you want to win this particular pH meter. And in one week, a week from today, one lucky comment will be selected. And I hope that it's you. Thanks a lot, Apera Instruments, for sponsoring this video and this amazing product giveaway. Let's make the Ventricina or the Ventricina salami, shall we? Okay, when it comes to the salami, it seems like it's stuffed typically in a fairly large diameter hog casing. I didn't have that, but I did have a large diameter beef bung, and I think that that's going to be perfect. So we're using a 89 to 102 millimeter beef bung that we got from the sausage maker. But if you do happen to have a hog casing that is a similar size, by all means use that. This beef bung comes salt packed, and all we have to do to prepare it is give it a rinse, give it a flush, and then let it soak in some cool water. And that's it. So I've already rinsed it, I've already flushed it, and that's just gonna hang out there for several hours while we get our spices together. The first ingredient in this salami is salt. Next, we're gonna be adding some Instacure number two. This is gonna take over 30 days to dry. Next up, we're gonna add a little black pepper, and then we're gonna come back with some fennel pollen. Fennel pollen is a great ingredient in salami making because it adds such a beautiful flavor. I'll put a link in the description box below if you want some for yourself, but if you don't have it, you can use fennel powder, no problem. Let's add some cayenne pepper for heat and some fennel seed. This is gonna be so good. I am gonna add dextrose. This is a monosaccharide sugar to help with the fermentation, and we are gonna add Calabrian pepper powder as well as a little garlic powder. Let's not forget about some white wine, and that's what our spice profile is gonna look like. Let's go ahead and set that to the side while we get our starter culture ready. The starter culture that we're gonna be using is Flavor of Italy. You do not need to use Flavor of Italy. You could use whatever starter culture you want, and if you are familiar with the method of naturally fermenting, you could do that as well. The choice is yours. If you're not familiar with salami starter cultures, think about it like this. You would add yeast to bread to help it rise, in the same way that you would add a starter culture to your salami meat to help it ferment. It's literally just that simple. All we're gonna do is add a little bit of this culture 
into some distilled water to help it wake up. Inside this little packet is a collection of good bacteria that is going to eat the sugar, not only in the dextrose, but in the wine. And while it eats the sugar, it's going to release lactic acid, a lot like sauerkraut does. During that process, the pH of your meat is going to drop, and this lower pH is what's going to allow us to safely dry our meat. So let that starter culture hang out at room temperature for about 30 minutes, and while we're doing that, let's look at our meat. The meat that we're going to be using for this Ventricina is a combination of lean pork and pork belly. Matter of fact, that's what the Ventri means in this salami's name. It means belly. So I've got about, I don't know, 40% pork belly, and about 60% lean pork, which gives this particular salami about a 20% fat content. Now notice I am using the fattier part of the pork belly, which I think is pretty important to do. It is gonna give us a more visually striking appearance. My meat is already cut up and partially frozen. And so now let's figure out how we're gonna grind it. We're gonna go ultra coarse for this particular grind, and I'm using the kidney plate for my number 12 grinder that we got from the sausage maker. This is gonna give me the coarsest possible grind. Now, normally this is a spacer plate, but as you can see right here, it's gonna produce an absolutely beautiful grind. Let's get it going. This is perfect and exactly what I was going for. Now, if you don't happen to have that kidney plate, that spacer plate, you could use the largest plate that you have or just chop it by hand, which is how it was traditionally done. Let's add our starter culture and our spice mix. And I know that this is gonna blow some of y'all's minds, but we are going to be mixing this salami meat by hand and the exact same rules apply no matter how you mix it. You want your meat super cold and you wanna mix this until you form a nice sticky batter. If you grab a small handful, you should be able to turn your hand upside down and it should stick to the underside of your hand. And I'm telling you, I am loving the way this looks. I love the meat size, the fat size. Let's get this into a casing. Now, I do wanna use a dedicated sausage stuffer for the salami. And the reason is because we don't wanna generate a lot of heat when stuffing that salami into its casing. We've gone through so much trouble managing our temperatures during the grinding and mixing stage, it would be a tragedy to ruin our salami during the stuffing stage. We have packed our meat in there nice and tight, minimizing any air pockets. Let's go ahead and get that into our beef bung. All right, guys, our salami meat has been packed in there ultra tight. We're using a sausage stuffing horn cleaner to just get the excess meat out of that horn. And you really want to pack it in there nice and tight. If you have just a little bit of meat remaining in the hopper, we're going to wrap that in some cling film so that we can use that little sample piece to test the pH here in a minute. So all I'm going to do is wrap that up and set that to the side. Tie your salami off as tight as you can. And with a sausage pricker, just go ahead and give the entire thing a poke. If you do happen to notice any air pockets, poke those out as well. Notice this is a fairly large diameter salami, which means this could take anywhere between four to six months before it's ready. And as a safety measure, because it is pretty heavy, I am going to put a netting around it. We've got a nice little tie point at the top. And as far as preparation goes, we are finished. We do need to weigh the salami. And so I'm going to put this on a scale and it looks like we are at 2,142 grams. That's the starting weight or the actual weight. And what we want to do is we want to target a 40% weight loss. So 2,142 is our actual weight. 40% less than that is 1,285 grams. As soon as we hit that target weight, we'll then begin the aging period, which will truly develop the salami's flavor. It's now time to ferment our salami, and proper fermentation really comes down to two things, temperature and humidity. The humidity needs to be above 90% for proper fermentation. And so all I'm gonna do is wrap my salami in cling film a couple of times. That's going to lock in the humidity and easily give me above 90%, which is gonna satisfy the humidity requirement. When it comes to temperature, each starter culture 
temperature is different. But for the most part, if you keep your salami in an area where the temperature is between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, your meat will ferment beautifully. The temperature of my room is roughly about 75 Fahrenheit. So I'm literally just going to leave that salami on my counter and it's going to ferment beautifully. Now, here's the question. How long do you let your salami ferment? Well, every starter culture is different, but with flavor of Italy, it normally takes between 18 to 24 hours. Like I said earlier, target temp is 70 to 85 Fahrenheit or 21 to 29 Celsius. Humidity is above 90% and our target pH should be between 4.9 to 5.2. So here's something to think about. It does not matter where you ferment your salami as long as the temperature and humidity requirement are met. All right, it's now the next day. About 23 hours has passed and we are now going to check the pH of our salami. Pretty simple. We're gonna open up that little sample piece that we had and we do this so that we don't disrupt the larger salami. Notice the color of our sample is nice and pink. It's also changed dramatically in texture. It's firmed up quite a bit. If you give it a little tug, you'll notice that the sample piece seems bound together and it has a bit of a glossy, almost waxy like appearance. It should smell nice, sweet, a little fermented, no off smells whatsoever. These are signs of proper fermentation. We are gonna pull out our Apera Instruments pH meter and this meter is incredibly easy to use. Just turn it on and insert the probe into the meat. You're gonna get very reliable, accurate information super fast. We're looking for a pH of anywhere between 4.9 and 5.2. With flavor of Italy, I like to target 4.9 and I'm at 4.93, that is absolutely perfect. But like I said earlier, anything under 5.2 is acceptable. Let's go ahead and stick that in the cleaning solution and we can now proceed to the drying phase of this recipe. And let me tell you, this right here is where all the magic happens. How you dry your salami is inevitably going to determine how the finished product comes out. You really wanna to try to put this in a cool dark place with high humidity. I'm using a drying chamber from the sausage maker that's specifically built for making charcuterie, but if you have a basement or a cellar that has a temperature of 55 Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius and a humidity's average of about 80%, you could place this in there. Once we hit our target weight, we're gonna let it dry for a few months more, two to three. This is gonna age and mature the salami, really develop its flavor. I wanna say that for this diameter salami, we let it dry for about six months and it's now ready. So let's give it a slice and see how it tastes. I just want to say one thing about the Ventresina salami. This has got to be one of the showiest salamis that I think we've ever made. I mean, check that out. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful marbling, great color. And I don't think we took anything away by grinding it, although this is a traditionally hand chopped salami. Matter of fact, by grinding it, I think we increased our binding capabilities. We've got chunks of pork belly. We've got lean pork and pork shoulder and fennel seeds sprinkled throughout. It looks absolutely amazing. One thing that you need to know about these larger diameter salamis is that if you can create the right drying conditions, you're gonna have one of the more flavorful types of salami because the longer it takes to dry, the more flavor is gonna be developed during that you know, aging, during that maturing process. And I gotta tell you, this smells absolutely incredible. Now we use fennel pollen. You don't need fennel pollen. You could use fennel powder. And we used Calabrian pepper powder. You don't need that. Uh, you could use smoked paprika and a little cayenne pepper. Uh, but if you have fennel pollen and if you have Calabrian pepper powder, they make absolutely great additions to this salami. So let's just go ahead and give it a taste and see what it's all about. Wow. I don't even know where to begin. That is so complex 
and so flavorful. There's these incredible fruity notes that are coming from the salami. Could potentially be from the white wine that we used. Could be from the meat itself. Very nice, low-level spice coming from the Calabrian pepper. And then, of course, you've got that fennel, not only in the seed, but also in the pollen. Wow. The fat's nice and creamy. And the trick with this salami is slice it paper thin. A meat slicer works great, or a really sharp knife and a skilled hand and great knife work will do the trick. But if you cut it too thick, it's going to seem a little chewy. I do got to say, I am impressed by the binding that we have on this, which is what I think it should be. Let's give it another taste. Mm. Absolutely amazing. I can't wait to put that in pasta. Put it on a pizza. Can you see that? Pizza toppings for probably some of the most exotic pizza you've ever eaten in your entire life. You'll find the recipe link to the Ventricina salami in the description box below. A salami that is not only incredibly beautiful, but equally delicious. And of course, the Apera Instruments pH meter. This is the very pH meter that I use in all of my salami making adventures. And you can win one in this episode if you missed the details. Go back to the beginning of the video, watch the ad in its entirety, and get the details on how to win your very own pH meter. I've been using mine for over two years. It's absolutely amazing. Great if you ferment anything, or if you have a pool, or if you're into gardening, or brewing, or whatever, brewing, anyway. Especially great if you're making salami because this is your insurance policy to let you know that you're not going to get any one sick. We're giving one away. Be sure to enter. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have a question about salami making or the Ventricina salami, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video or got something awesome out of it, give me a great big thumbs up. If you're new to sausage making, you've come to the right place. We are in the middle of a month long series where we do a brand new video recipe upload every single day through the month of October. Click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. But at the end of this video, I'll put a playlist so you can get caught up from the beginning. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh, so good.